cellar capacity is around uh, 600 hectoliters or 60,000 liters. So that's uh, 120,000 pints. had a vice beer of some description and I was like, this, this is incredible. Yeah. So I've never tasted anything like this before. Um, went through my college course, we studied biotechnology and uh, there was quite a few of us in my class doing a bit of uh, brewing of sorts. Finals, finals came up, studying for my exams and job prospects weren't looking so good for me. I, was, I actually was planning on leaving the country to do a master's program in Switzerland and my, I, I needed something to tide me over for the summer. Dropped my CV into the Black Sheep looking for uh, bar work. Manager said, no, no hours available here, but um, we'll keep your CV and uh, hand it on to the bosses. There's a few bars around Dublin, but the bosses got the CV and three weeks later I was down trying try <laughs> for a, a brewer's position, which I didn't know until the third day after the third day of trialing that um, it was actually for the head brewer position and I was running the show ever since. Uh, the, definitely with the screwing the logical mm -hmm. side of my head on and um, obviously science is a, is a good, mm -hmm. it's a good uh, degree to apply yourself to anything but um, definitely the flavours and home brewing and really enjoying drinking beer is the, the fuel for the passion and the, the scientific side of things was a bonus that you can fix a lot of problems. In the beer world, jizz, I think everyone is a, an inspiration, everyone's doing something different. The characters in the Belgian brewing scene like uh, Jean Benoit and uh, Cantillon is just it's incredible, he's a living legend. This Goodbye Beer Monday is one that I um, constantly find myself ordering in the bars, just it never seems to be not fresh. Just trying to find your place as a brewery, which we're still very much struggling to get, but uh, at least we think we're in the going in the right direction. I think um, I think we have a, a firm idea of what direction we're taking. But I mean, like when 2012, when I started, the <coughs> the canvas was blank, both to my uh, favour and detriment, because um, there was a lot to learn. This learning curve was steep at that point, but. I think it, it paid off in the end that we have our, we have our own destination where we're going as a brewery. When you're having down weeks and you feel crap that a, a batch of beer hasn't gone your way and all that, just these things pass and you have to be able to write that off as a learning, learning curve and constantly know, feel it in your gut when a beer has to go out and when it shouldn't. So we're brewing on some of the worst equipment in the world. So we'll be finally putting that to sleep when we get a new brewery. So uh, you know, uh, you know, a good carpenter never blames the tools. Now we're kind of eradicating that rule. So uh, we'll see. We'll see when we're given all the right tools how much we can achieve with a good brewery when everything goes right. Yeah. <laughs> that, one, uh, that, that once in every three months, where actually this week, looking back at everything. This product, this packaging schedule went right. This brewing schedule went right, and there's that one beer that took months of planning. It's well, just worked out very much. So it's kind of like um, free advertising, really. We're finding it tough to uh, keep on top of it at the moment because largely it's myself that's contributing yeah. to the social media. But it's hard to pull out your phone and take a picture when you're balancing between the office, driving to and from to production locations, and managing everything that's in between, order and stock and all that. And the main unique selling point that craft beer has over the macro beers is, is flavour. It'll, it'll always be able to achieve flavour. The David and Goliath argument would be um, if, if David learns how to keep the quality up and that's something that we're constantly striving for with our lab is finally up and running now in the next week or so that we've been uh, working a long time for. I'm finding contracts that I've had in place for the best part of three years being it by the producer being half quartered, it's just a nightmare to deal with. But that's the thing with this industry as well. We're an innovative bunch. The export value I think we need to achieve is have to be known as Irish beer is good, not just because it's Irish. Irish beer should achieve its place in the world by merit, not by it's just coming from Ireland. I don't for life. Uh, <laughs>
I've got the Bruin boat, you know. I think the, the easiest answer I can pull for that is the Orval. It's just a, it's equal parts of nostalgia, a great beer for me. It's just it's a tough question to answer because yeah. I've never really found myself drinking the same beer twice.